This is part one of the Enterprise NCC 1701A or refit, which will cover the primary hull, deck A through J. The refit was the most extensive the Enterprise NCC 1701 underwent during her lifetime and involved an almost complete rebuilt of the ship. This level of refit has always been part of the mission's plan for the Constitution class ships and the Enterprise was just one of the several in the class that underwent the procedure, which greatly extended their potential operational life. Externally, the Enterprise A was virtually identical to the refit USS Enterprise, but was destroyed in the movie Star Trek Part 3 months prior to its launch. Most of the changes were made on the bridge and at least three different designs were used during the ship's surfaces. In this comparison, we're going to start up with the original Enterprise, which is around 288 meters or 980 feet in length, and is around 88 meters or 289 feet in height, while the slightly larger Enterprise A is around 305 meters or 1,000 feet in length, and uh, 75 meters or 246 feet in height. It has 23 decks and can accommodate up to 450 officers and crew members. Furthermore, it has a top speed of warp 7. While the structural frame of the ship was on the predecessor but retained, the hull plating was completely replaced. The engine system was given a major overhaul, engineering personnel with the matter antimatter reactor being completely replaced, and the horizontal warp drive system being enhanced with a vertical warp core. This arrangement will become standard on later Starfleet vessel. The warp engine upgrade to the refit constitutional class was a significant improvement. Significant changes were made to the saucer section. The overall size was increased to accommodate extra facilities and a new bridge module was installed, which now include an auxiliary airlock where the shuttle could dock. In addition, there were three phaser banks and an impulse deflection crystal at the back of the saucer. On the bottom of the saucer section were the sensor dome and three additional phaser banks. The photon torpedo launcher was located on the underside of the saucer section, just above the main navigational deflector. In fact, a considerable number of airlocks and docking ports were added to the ship, and they could now be found on the side of the engineering hall, on the torpedo bay, and on top of the underside of the saucer section. The Broussard ram scoop, warp nacelles, and pylons were replaced with a newer, more efficient design that improved the ship's top speed. These slightly larger nacelles increased the Enterprise length from 289 meters to 305 meters. At the rear was the subspace fuel radiator and shuttle bay. On the aft of the primary hull are the impulse engines and on the secondary hull is the airlock. The Enterprise A had 23 decks, with the bridge located on Deck A, at the very top of the saucer section. It was here where the captain and his senior staff made decisions based on information communicated to them from throughout the ship. The layer of the NCC 1701A bridge retained many dissimilarities to the earlier Constitution class ships, but there were some key differences. Most notably, the reorientation of the turbo lifts to the left and right of the captain's chair. At the front was the main view screen, environmental subsystems, engineering station, and at the back was the head. The captain's chair, helm, navigation, and science station remain where they have been on the previous Enterprise. On the port side were the communication station and engineering stations. Toward the back were the emergency atmospheric system and docking port hatchway. 
Numerous computer displays were positioned above the duty station and on the bulkheads of the bridge perimeter. This greatly increased the amount of information available to the bridge crew in comparison to earlier ships. Deck B has the ship's executive block, which includes the briefing room, the captain's ready room, and the executive officer's office, all located for the two turbolift station. There is no deck at the front of the turbolifts, as this is the officer's lounge high bay. Most of Deck C is the officer's dining mess a three-quarter ring surrounding the manual kitchen used by gourmet chefs to prepare food items unavailable from the food fabricator. The remainder of Deck C is the two-deck high officer lounge complex, which is comprises of the observation lounge and the ward room. There are two labs comprising of the inner section of Deck D, including the Computer Lab and High Energy Lab. Eight single senior officers' quarters surround these in a ring. As we take a closer look at the officers' quarters, it consists of a sleeping room with one bed and a living room, separated by a sliding transparent aluminum partition. A private refresher room adjoins each sleeping room and includes a head, sink, sonic shower and laundry unit. A walk-in closet and locker are located behind the sleeping and living room. Outboard of the quarters are three pairs of phaser units, light support system for deck A and D, plus four emergency battery banks. As we head down to Deck E, there are 40 singles officers quarters surrounding the main computer memory banks and two officers messes. To the rim of the primary hall is a low head clearance area reducing from 2 meters to 0.5 meters clearance. This low clearance area holds the light support system for Deck E to G as well as 24 emergency battery banks. In addition, the outermost portion of the low clearance area is taken up by the network of air ducts, plumbing line, fiber optic cables, and the power cables servicing these three decks. The deck F is taken up by 163 enlisted quarters and can accommodate up to 326 personnel. The center section consists of eight water tanks plus this specialized system which transfer the upstream plumbing network for the ship. The deck also includes four general utility rooms and three damage control lockers are mixed in with the quarters. Also situated on this deck are most of the social compartment including the six observation messes the high bay of the recreational dock, and a small bowling alley. That's all we know about it. The impulse drive, a fusion reactor, and the deuterium tanks are located at the rear of Deck F. The full observation lounge is located 180 degrees from the recreational deck and is utilized for the formal social gathering and diplomatic receptions. There are a total of four reaction thrusters on the upper rim and lower rim of the saucer, including the hydrogen tanks. Deck G has only half the living space of Deck F due to the shape of the lower surface area of the primary hall. The outer ring has six junior officers' quarters and 40 enlisted quarters, as well as the lower half of the recreational deck. The low clearance ring has four organic defabricators, which collect waste from the downstream plumbing network and recycle the waste. 
At the very center is the command intelligence center, which includes the auxiliary bridge and independent life support system. In the ring has 16 junior officers quarter, which also has five six-person personnel transporter rooms. Four labs including the biophysic, biochemistry, anthropology, and chemistry lab. The sick bay complex and the security complex which also includes the assault transporter room. Spock on the bridge. The recreational deck is the center of social activity and has an independent life support system for exotic sports and can also be used as an emergency shelter for the entire ship's complement. The impulse and environmental engineering are located at the back of the ring with four reaction thruster package and their hydrogen tanks. Also here are four primary hull landing pads as well as nine cargo holds, five of which can be accessed by a worker with external hatches opening out to the lower hull surface. The center section of Deck H is taken up by the communication bay, which houses the four communication stations as well as the main computer. This deck also has two 22 evacuation transporters, eight emergency battery banks, and the life support system for deck H to J. Between and beside the airlock complex are the three phaser control rooms, which are adjacent to the three pairs of phaser unit on this deck, as well as the phaser unit on deck D. The dorsal section of this deck has four pairs of explosive bolts, which lock the dorsal pylon to the primary hull. There are four labs, including the Chaos Physic Lab, Tachyonic, Physic, and Astrophysic Lab, which includes the ship's main airlock and docking port 2 and 3. Glen Hill still will let me to it, won't he? Deck I is the primary hull general cargo complex and has two cargo transporter and two cargo bay decks. At the center is the staging room and three observation gallery, each consistent of a catwalk overhanging four viewports. And finally, the last deck of the primary hall is Deck J consistent of the primary hall sensor bay, two central processing unit, four sensor technician stations, the subspace navigation unit, and access to the ship's main sensor array. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look into the Enterprise NCC 1701A or refit. While the Enterprise A shared the same layer as the original Enterprise 1701, several improvements were made including the entire bridge module, a more streamlined warp nacelle, the pylon connecting to the warp nacelle, and the slightly larger diameter of the ship's saucer section. The final mission of the USS Enterprise came in 2285 when the ship was destroyed to prevent it from falling into Klingons. It was replaced by the USS Enterprise NCC 1701A, but was later phased out with more advanced ship. Part 2, which will cover the secondary hall, should be completed in a few more weeks. I also want to thank Mitt Ren for playing an important role in helping me out with this animation. And if you want to see more animation regarding the original Enterprise, the Enterprise D, and Voyager, check out my playlist on the right hand corner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.